In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to give you a brief addendum on using the Sky Replacement tool. I had a subscriber who said, can you add your own Sky Replacements? The answer is yes. I was incorrect on that in the other video. The second is, could you use green screen and then use the results so that you can chroma key using a, an actual motion background for the new sky. Well, I thought let's try that. Let me show you a little bit about how to do that. First of all, I'm going to go into my plugins and I'll go to my AI sky replacement. And then I'll pick my video. We'll take one we used before, which was a flagpole shot. And that will come into my preview window. So far, so good. Now, I found a way to add to this location. You notice I have two green screens. Here is the location. If your default boot drive is drive C, it shows you where these files are located and you can add to them. Files that come in the program are 4,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels, just so you know. So this is what you have to pick from. I took two different green screens created them with a graphic editor and added them here. So now that I have that, I'm going to add one. I'll click on one. And I found that the best way to do this is to turn my feather virtually off and then to take my land ambient and turn it down maximum. I still get a little fuzz here around the flagpole. And then I pick the segment that I want to use. I'm going to pick the very first frames here uh, since the camera is relatively still. We'll just take a dozen seconds or so. And then I click my transform video and wait. Now I have my modified video with the green screen replacing the original sky. I'll take clouds, which is not a graphic image, but actually a movie put it on track number one. Now I'm going to take my modified and put it on track number two. And now I'm going to chroma key track number two. So I'll double click on that. And we'll click on the chroma key under object settings. I'll use my eyedropper. We'll click on our green screen. And here's what we have with default. You notice I do have some green around the pole that I don't really like. I'll widen the color range a little bit more. And they'll take care of some of it. I don't know if I can take care of all of it, but we'll try. We'll set it pretty high right now. Click on OK. And now when I play this, I should have the sky in motion. I also should have uh, the replacement from what we did before. I play it. Again, my camera should be ideally steady. But it does show you a little bit. You see it doesn't catch it perfectly. But I, the clouds are actually in motion. And we do have the moving background as well as the foreground shot. I'm going to show you a sample which shows you the original on the lower left quadrant, the modified on the upper right quadrant. And you can see that we still don't have quite the same crispness and, and focus that we do in the original. But at least uh, this is, as far as I could get trying this technique, 